Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Rob Wing, for those of you that, uh, that don't know me, and welcome to yet another webinar produced by the National Traction Engine Trust. And today we're going to be seeing a chat that I have with Matt at Berrybrook Steam. And for those of you that are not quite sure where that is, that's just around about the Exeter area. So slight departure from a normal live show. What we're going to do is to have a chat with Matt, have a look around the, the works, see what's on, have a chat about full size, bit of miniature, bit of steam, bit of this, bit of the other, bit of scaring if there is any, and then we'll um, put this all together and our General Secretary Naomi will be looking after the broadcasting of this this evening. So, with all that, let's make a start. Matt, lovely to see you. Um, nice to meet you. Hey, Jay. <laughs> I don't think we've met for a while. I think I, I think I've seen you up on the on the rally field somewhere. No doubt. I think I remember taking part in some of the uh, Steam Apprentice Club days back in my back in my younger days. I yes, well, our engine down at um, Dingles. I think it would have been. Yep, that's Quite right. Or well, yeah, very much so. All down at um, Stithians, where that's it. The trust yeah. holds its uh, its Steam days. But uh, well, I've never been to your premises before. So, who started the business? So, it's a long old story where Berrybrook came from. They always um, are. <laughs> they always are. Um, the best story. So, we're a family-owned company, and actually, we can actually trace its roots right back to my great-grandfather, um, a gentleman called Jack Anthony, in 1953. Um, he was a fish merchant in Exeter. Well, that's, that's okay. <laughs> I'll fitting. live with that. <laughs> um, came home one day and decided he wanted to start a motor dealership, selling motorcycles. Um, and that was actually the birth of, of a company which is still prospering well in Exeter called Bridge Motorcycles, um, still run by um, another part of our of our family. Um, fast forward quite a few years, uh, and my grandfather Barry um, was was in charge, or partly with his brothers, in charge of Bridge Motorcycles, um, and my father Sean, um, who has obviously been part of Berrybrook for a very long time, um, was running the Reliant three-wheeler section of uh, Bridge Motorcycles. Um, obviously a little bit before my time, so it's hazy in, in some regards, I've got stories, etc. Um, but he was he was running a, a um, part of Bridge called Key Motors, which was selling three-wheeler Reliance. Obviously this doesn't quite relate to steam yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> um, now, Key Motors um, eventually um, he, he well, Reliant was shutting down in the early two thousand, around two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two. They were they were coming to the up towards the end of their their supply. So, um, my father Sean um, and and with 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 granddad, unfortunately, my great grandfather wasn't around at that time. Um, they went for the the Morgan dealership okay, um, yeah. for the local area. Um, having walked around the premises, if ever, anyone's ever visited Berrybrook, you'll know we are. Morgan main agent. <laughs> There's no shortage of Morgan, Morgan motor cars around here, um, and and that's probably what what you'll spot from the road. Um, so around 2000, they, they picked up the dealership, um, and and I say a lot of things fell into place, and we ended up on this premises where we are today, um, as as a Morgan dealership, still doing a little bit of Reliant as a as a as a breakaway from from Bridge Motorcycles. Okay, so, so so that's a bit of the history of uh, of, of how Barrybrook came into existence. But so, how did you migrate from a Morgan dealership, which is a British sports car that were is synonymous with with traditional traditional uh, workmanship, into steam? That's an interesting transition because you've gone from it's, the fast to the slow. It's quite the jump. <laughs> so um, fast forward a few years, two thousand and seven. Barrybrook is its own independent company. We've broken away from Bridge. Um, so there's no link there anymore of our family connections. Uh, granddad is still involved. Dad was running it, um, and Dad had an interest in steam engines. He owned a, um, in fact, there's a picture on my wall um, of me sat on a four-inch scale barrel double crank compound road locomotive, which he owned. He was a, he was an interest of my great grandfather's as well. Um, and one day, um, Dad, um, along with a, with a gentleman he worked with at the time. Um, who he took on actually to, to start this steam section, decided to, to buy and sell a, a miniature traction engine. Um, okay. See how it went. I think it was an advert placed in, in one of the popular magazines, um, purely as a, as a, see what happens really. I, I think it was no, no more than that. 
Um, and 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 it all went well. So there they go. Another one. Obviously, we already had the car dealership doing very well alongside it. So it was more of a started off as more of a we'll have, we'll give it a go. Um, and before you know it, a website was launched, and and Berrybrook Miniature Steam was born. Um, yeah, because you're 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 quite well known in it certainly in the southwest and in the movement for. Um, your your miniature steam provision so i mean i've just had a look out here i've never been here before so it's quite fun and i, I can see lots of you know very different sizes of engines they've also got a couple of couple of full-size ones i think there's rather nice burrowed out there yes which of course is close to my heart yes <laughs> um so i mean what, what what i'm really interested in is that uh, in the national traction engine trust we we appeal to to all steam enthusiasts and uh and one of the areas we're keen to to, to grow and to and to, and to revisit mm. and to rekindle it is is the guys that are venturing into steam and 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 they're coming into the movement in in miniatures and so you know the two the fours and six inches and That's it. could you I mean could you explain to me what a four inch miniature is or a six inch miniature because when you look at some of them the difference between a six inch and a four is a lot more than fifty percent so I'm sure that there'll be people out there that would really like to understand what that means yeah of course. Um, so, mini- miniature steam. The, the, the well, the miniature steam part of the community, I suppose, has adopted this this scaling, um, which which you mentioned, is is, is inches to the foot, uh, for want of a better word. So you're looking, if we're looking at a, a, a two inch scale traction engine, for instance, um, you're looking at a tabletop item, really. So two people can lift it up, um, and that's actually two inches to the foot of its full size counterpart. Um, now. As you say, go up through the scales, three inch scale, really, really popular, popular size. Um, you'll see probably uh, that the burrow is quite a popular design in three inch scale. Um, and, and I suppose you could compare that, that's technically quarter scale, three inches to the foot. Yeah. Um, you go up to four inch scale, technically third scale, and obviously six inch scale is often referred to as a half size engine. Mm. We're quite familiar with that, with that term. The, the, there is, a, as you say, a lot of variation between, on occasion, you'll see perhaps a, a, a four inch scale road locomotive, for instance, based on a particularly large full size prototype. Um, and you, you put that alongside, say, a, a six inch scale tractor. Uh, mm. In fact, I've got one out there now, a six inch scale tractor uh, based on the Tasker. Um, and actually, all bar possibly some height differences, they're very much the same sized engine. Um, and that's obviously a, a, a reflection of, of the prototypes, the full size. Obviously, we go on the rally field, we walk up the, the lineups at the Great Dorset Steam Fair and all the other fantastic shows we can visit uh, all over the country. And um, they're all shapes and sizes, and that's reflected in the miniature world, um, really, which is fantastic. Just thinking about those, those folks that might be looking this evening and thinking, yeah, I always fancied having a go, but I don't quite know how to do it. And, and, I, and I can liken myself, you know, 20 years ago, jumping into, or 22 years jumping in, into the steam world. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a mad thing to do sometimes. So you're a youngster, you're, you're really interested in mechanics, and you want to get involved in steam. How do you go about that? I mean, do, do you, well, what, what type of investment does family have to make? And is there, any, is there any support and training that's around them? What regulations sit around it? It'd be really interesting to understand that. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, everyone gets into it differently. You know, it's a real. Is a. Is a. There's a huge. You know, I mean, the community is made up of people from a complete broad range of backgrounds, mm. experiences, where they come from. The one we see probably quite a lot as a as a as a dealership, so to speak, a, a sort of commercial outlet for for second hand yeah. uh, traction engines is obviously, as you said, that newcomer, that person who's possibly a little bit nervous about breaking into the hobby. Um, which historically was typically private sales, possibly. There were obviously there's been dealerships around for a long time doing mm. this sort of thing, but a lot of it was sort of private. Um, and you know, breaking into it can be quite an intimidating thing. As you said, there's lots of things around it that you've got to understand. Um, I mean, part of what we do is we kind of help make that leap, um, you know, as, as, a, as a company. Obviously, there are various avenues. I mean, my first port of call would always be to say, go and visit a steam rally. If you really, you know, if if you're if you're at that uncertain, go and have a chat with the guys on the footplates, see what they're up to, see see um, how they enjoy their engine, see what sort of work goes in behind the scenes to keep them on the rally field. Because a bit, obviously, a big part of the hobby is maintenance. It is that time we spend in the workshops, looking after any any size engine. 
of course you, you've got uh, boiler testing uh, regulations it goes in, it goes in behind that um, and obviously insurances etc there's all sorts of other bits and pieces just to bear in mind but it's not that scary really uh, if you can get your head around keeping a, a, a car on the road for instance realistically okay there's some slightly different things to bear in mind with the traction engine but not an awful lot more so Someone comes into you and 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 they they they've they've had a look on a steam rally. They decided they they really like you know a particular make and you you got some there. So, how how much hand holding do you do for them and helping them come from, the the committal to yes we want to get involved to being out and freestanding. How how does that how does that journey, move? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's um, we. So we've got the showroom here. We show people around, and obviously this is a really good place for them to start and actually say, that's the sort of size I want. Um, as part of the sort of buying experience, we especially, I mean, obviously there's a whole range of selling procedures, but we would usually go down the sort of boiler testing route and sort of say, look, it's either it's got a boiler test on it or we, or we you know, we'll, we'll go through that with a, with a commercial inspector to make sure we're happy with what we're obviously selling them because obviously that's part of our peace of mind. And obviously as a buyer, they want to know what they're buying is... is, is suitable and, and it's going to see them for, for a very long time we then as, as part of the sort of procedure um up front you know it takes a couple of weeks between the sort of i want to buy it to i'm going to come and pick it up the exciting day um and and very frequently especially with the with the newcomers we'll actually we'll actually do a little bit of tuition with them at that point we'll sort of say and that tuition i'm never going to pretend that's extensive that's not what that's about you know there's a lot to learn on these engines what we want to make sure is that when they go away they feel firstly comfortable that they can ask us the questions they need to going forward mm. um, and also that they're going to be operating it safely obviously the one that we all know is, is the water level and mm. there's a few other key fe features that we we sort of um, try and instill in them within that day and obviously we they, they go away from that that time um, with the assurance actually if there is any questions we are at the end of the phone and that's what we pride ourselves on um, you'll never be ringing us up saying, "Oh, I don't know how to do this," and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll always try my best. I'll always try and help them out. You know? So, are there many clubs in, around that that people can join, that that they can look to to get some support from? I mean, I'm aware that uh, obviously do a bit of marketing. That the National Traction Engine Trust is uh, is you know welcomes um, anybody that's got you know, a steam engine. Uh, when well, after all, I'm are are kind of raison d'etre is to keep steam on the road so you know if, if steam's on the road we're there for those types of people but are there miniature clubs and 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 bodies around that can help yeah so i mean often the go-to is if 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 especially with sort of work that needs to be done going forward um is, is model engineering societies they're all over the country uh, in every, i mean I've, I've not managed to yet find an area which isn't really covered by one. There probably is somewhere, but you know, m most people have got access to some sort of model engineering society somewhere in the country, and, and they've usually got a great network of people in their local area. I mean, in fact, surprisingly, how close it's surprising how close a lot of these uh, other model engineers are to some of our customers. I think they sometimes think it's one of those really rare hobbies that no one really does. And actually, you know, I often say to people when they're sat in this office, I can I can point to probably half a dozen engines within a stone throw of this place and that's not just linked to us you know so it's it's a it is a prevalent hobby especially in, in the model engineering world so so i think i think that sounds like the message is that you know come out have a go hmm. because there is help and support out there and that you as a dealership will will help introduce the new owner to yeah. to the hobby and then signpost them through to where they can go yeah. to to get other support I think most importantly, I mean, as as you know, I'm sure we both know, you know, playing around with steam is great fun. Yeah. And I, and I always say to to people, it's our engines are the keys to a whole group of people, yeah. and and there's some lovely people out there, mm. and and I've never found somebody that that doesn't want to help or is interested or, and <clears throat> I'm sure that we all worry sometimes we're going to make a fool of ourselves. And gosh, I made a fool of myself on on many occasions when I was playing with our engines. But that's fine, I and mean, we all do it. You know, I was talking to a guy today who put too much water into his boiler and it hydraulic. I said, oh, well, you know, you're not the first person to do that, and you're not the last. And, no. and so the, the, these, these, I'm going to use the word toys, but they're not, um, are 
they're, they're really quite tolerant. I mean, clearly they're, they're, they're serious bits of kit. Yes. But, but you don't just specialise in, in, in miniature steam. You, I see you've got, well, we, you told, said me earlier, you've got a couple of full-size ones there. So if people are looking for engines, then Barry Brooks got some options for them. We, we obviously, as the business grew, it, was, it made sense to, to begin to branch out. Um, beginning, probably the one that sort of we discussed on our website was a, was a barrel called Star, uh, oh. which was obviously based in Cornwall. Um, um, but actually from that, that was sort of the early days of the full size stuff we got involved with. As it's sort of developed, we've developed it into this sort of commission sale, um, almost brokering, but well, we are brokering the, the, the full size engines. We advertise, we help people find a new home for their engine. We help buyers find the ultimate engine for them. Um, and that's, that's obviously, that's grown as a, it's a part of the miniature stuff, but it's also something slightly different because you is a slightly different clientele you're working with possibly so we do get newcomers, obviously, with the with the full size stuff as well, which is fantastic to see. Um, but also, you're working possibly with people that have been in the hobby for for some years, looking to to possibly move it to a new home or or or, or, um, or buy something to to add to the collection or or enjoy for future years. So it's a and it's a great stuff to get involved with. We absolutely, you know, we love working with all this stuff. Um, and the full size stuff, obviously, there's the historical element as well. So it's it's an interesting, you know, you get some really interesting stories and talk to some, well, across the board here. But you know, you talk to some really fascinating people, um, and that's, that's obviously a big part of what we enjoy. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think that's the, that that's a point very well made. That not only you're not only providing uh, engines for sale, but you are offering that brokerage for someone that's maybe come to the end of their steam career or wants to, to move sideways up or to add that there is always that, that opportunity. And, and that's quite interesting because uh, you never quite know where you're going because you, you want something specific and then it's, it's how do I find that? So it's, it's really really useful to know that there are companies out there and yours in particular that specialise in, in kind of finding what people want, isn't no, it? I say we'll always do our best. <laughs> you know, we'll always do our best, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, Matt. So, tell us what we got here, because they look um, they look quite small engines. But what scales are these engines? Okay, so this is our sort of very very miniature display area. Um, this is where the sort of I suppose you could argue the tabletop scales um, are displayed in the showroom here. Um, we mentioned the scaling earlier a little bit, and, and so we're starting here at one and a half inches to the foot. Um, this is a little arch, and it's based on the Royal Chester, a very very famously uh, modelled miniature. Um, I've seen a huge amount of these over the years. Um, very, very popular um, build, obviously based on the on the famous four shaft arching. Um, something like that, obviously, is a really good starting point in terms of sort of miniature ownership. Um, having said that, not fantastic steamers necessarily. We tend to find actually, as you get, well, it's very um, sort of well known in the sort of miniature in, uh, miniature steam world. The smaller you go, the more difficult it becomes to steam. Um, and it's, 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 it's a rule of thumb that we've picked up over the years, whereby actually by the time you get to something like this, and while, it's a, while it is a, a, a miniature of a coal-fired traction engine, which is fully functional um, in every way, it's a light, we call it a live steam engine. Um, realistically, if you were gonna, while well, you can fire it, and I have fired them in the past, if you were gonna try and do that regularly, it does become something of a challenge. It's a small engine. Um, you're talking a, a sort of a fire, which is only that large, and once you start using coal in, in a space of that sort of area with, with fairly limited draft, it, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge to carry out. Possible, but, but, it, but it's a challenge. So typically we see these more as very ornate display items. Okay. Um, so, so what type of price bracket does the, 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 the enthusiast have to reserve to buy one of those? Something of that sort of size. You're looking somewhere between sort of two thousand, three thousand, that that sort of area, really. Um, th th there are engines we haven't got any here um, that, that that come up in, in one inches, one inch to the foot. Um, slightly smaller, somewhere between one thousand and two thousand. Actually, on the end there, we've got a, a, a three quarter inch scale, so even slightly smaller again. Um, uh, it's actually a, a maxi trap design little wagon. Um, which is which is um, just just over fifteen hundred pounds. So, yeah, it's. Um... So there's the, there's the, there's there's the small guys that are available for for everybody. 
That's it. To start with, okay. Yeah. But really, if you, if you want to get out to a rally field, then we need to move a little bit uh, to a little bit bigger scale. We, we do, really. We do, really. I've seen these rallied successfully, but, but realistically, if you want to be sort of dr- driving around and enjoying the main arena, doing the things that we, you know, that, 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 that you see taking place on, on some of the bigger engines, then really we want to be sort of stepping up to some of the engines uh, in the showroom. Well, I suppose you better take me and have a look at some of those. You better add. <laughs> right, Matt. So these guys are looking a little bit bigger. I reckon I, reckon I could play with one of these. <laughs> what we got here? Right, we'll, we'll start um, We'll start just with the red one on the end here, shall mm-hmm. we? Um, six inches six inches to the foot, half size. You know, it's, just, it's quite, a, quite a, a small engine, uh, based on a, a tractor, the Tasker tractor, um, which, great, great fun little engines, really. The, the tractor, they're, a, they're a, a relatively high revving engine, solid flywheel, great road going engines. Um, single cylinder but they're, they're, they're great fun um, you know you, you can do a, do a lot with one of those um, so that's a six inch engine but mm. well, that looks virtually the same size as this barrel here which I guess is a four inch that's right yeah so and yet the price is quite different so I mean yes so there, there is a there, there is a cost angle involved the bigger you get the more it costs is it yes yeah so so sort of the, the, the half size uh, six inch scale market we, we tend to find um, albeit as you say in, in sort of as you're looking at it they look they look not million millions of miles apart. Obviously, that half size thing and being a slightly bigger engine, every 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 little bit counts with with, okay. with these engines. They're, they're, they're quite a there's, there's quite a lot of steps on on the gradient. Um, put it that way. I mean, I, we, we, we see a lot of these guys around, don't we? Barrels, yeah. single cylinders. Some, sometimes we see compound engines, but but this is really is kind of almost the stock in trade. That's the go to. Yeah. I know it's a barrel. I'm biased, but. But yes. it really is a, a, yeah. a very popular that, size of engine, isn't it? That's really the, the probably I'd say the bread and butter of what we what we get involved with. You know, we see while I haven't got loads in here at the moment, we see we see a lot of this this type of engine, the four inch Burrell, the four inch Foster, yeah. two real um, they're sort of the, the heart of the, the the miniature 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 steam engines, really. And, and then we've got this this engine here called Percy. <laughs> this engine, yeah. Lovely little engine. It's actually a, a freelance design. Oh, right. um, freelance. We, we we take freelance as actually being is a traction engine in image, in design, in, in terms of its functionality, um, but it's actually not based on any particular full size prototype. Um, it's actually a, a particularly yeah. It's a particularly nice one. I actually personally own that one myself. Some See? years ago, yeah, oh, um, okay. yeah, yeah, quite a long time ago. It, it's it's um, not anymore, but. Um, yeah, it's sort of. We do a lot of engines. Sort of do the do the cycle in the in the community. They come back to us some some years later, and and um, we love to see them back. Um, you know, for various reasons. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I see the engines come and go. People people buy something and they they get involved and they think, well, I want a, a fancy a change or a move. Yeah, that's it. it. Moves on. So what do you want here? Jack. Jack. Yeah. So a good name of my household. That's it. <laughs> Jack on the end there. So another another four inch scale um, traction engine. So the same scaling as the Blue Burrow we just talked about. Yeah. There. Um, is the is the Durham and North Yorkshire, which probably isn't one you you've seen a no. huge amount of. Um, Durham and North Yorkshire was a was an earlier well that design specifically was an earlier earlier design than, than what we're probably typically used to seeing on the rally field. You can see there's a few sort of features around it which are, mm-hmm. um, you know give it away as being an earlier design. That one is a little bit of a, of a one-off, actually, in some ways. And, and, and part of the beauty of, of miniature steam engines is, is they're, they're all different. They're all built by individuals in their, in, their, in their sheds, their garages, their workshops. They all come from different places. There is no set standard. Um, now that's, probably, that's probably a good point uh, to, to, to mention, is that um, all of these sizes of, a, <coughs> excuse me, of miniature engines are actually built by individuals. And so... Is there a quality standard that the buyer can can look to, or is it is it down to the to to, to you as, as the business to to guide that that customer through and explain to them the standards and what they're buying, what they're not? We we obviously yeah, I mean it's a big part of what we mm. we pride ourselves on is obviously being as, as as honest and open as we possibly can. There's no point selling something to someone if if, if, if you know, and obviously if we're aware that they're possibly not as clued up to what to look mm. out for, we make sure we say look that that bearing we put, possibly wouldn't be happy with it you mm. know so we'll have a look at it and a big part of the workshops next door 
Um, we've got a, a couple of the, the, the chaps working in there, um, overseen by a couple of the sort of people that work for us, um, independent engineers around us as well. We've got a great sort of partnership around around the area. Uh, it means that we can, you know, usually hammer out anything which is okay. which is going to cause a new owner any particular. Hammering issue. out sounds a bit of a <laughs> a bit of an unfortunate phrase, but I know what you mean, yeah. and I'm sure we'll go next door in a minute. But but you've we've in the full size world, if you, if you want to buy an engine, you go and have a look at it, decide what it's like, then you go and get a boiler inspector. Is that the same process with miniature, or does it vary slightly? I really don't know. Yeah, um, re- relative, relatively similar. Um, I mean, we actually have, we have an engineer, we have an independent um, boiler inspector who will come in. He's, he's, he's commercial commercial yeah. inspector yeah, yeah. Um, who will come in and, and, and ticket these engines, assuming they're going to go through the ticket. Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. that's that's not always a given. Um, when requested um, on occasion also we do have buyers who say actually no I want to send my own so it's, it's similar yeah. similar sort of world really to, okay. to the full size community and, and just from my point of view and I, I, I do understand the, the, the boiler regulations well in general mm. from operating and owning a, a full size engine yeah. are they virtually the same with miniature yeah we, we the same parameters we, we follow a very well it's, it's the same very similar scheme to the, okay. to the full size so it's, it's the same it's in the steel boiler anyway. When we go to the slightly smaller ones across the back shelf yeah. there, um, you, and, and with the three inch scale, you, you are into sort of copper boiler, so it's, a, it's a, some, uh, some changes but, there. But in general, but the steel the boilers. Stream, yeah. yeah. So, so the idea is come in, decide what you'd like, have a chat, have, have a chat with you or whoever is the, yeah. is, is, is the, the selling agent, and then get a boiler inspector in yeah. if it hasn't been done to, to give a, th- a neutral opinion. That's right. So that you've got some form of, yeah. of understanding what goes on. That's it. And okay. then you sort of go through the procedure from there. So this is, this is looking beautiful. Lovely, lovely looking engine that one. Um, Talk to us about that. So that one there is, is actually, it's um, nine inches to the foot. So three, three quarter scale, mm-hmm. um, which is, not something we've seen loads on the rally field. I don't think you've probably seen many of those no, out and about. No. Um, we actually, uh, well, that's actually a, it's a second-hand one. Not that you, not that you'd know it from the uh, no, you wouldn't. from from the paintwork. But we, beautiful condition. It's, it's, it's stunning, isn't it? Um, yeah, produced by a company called uh, Dream Machines. That one who we sold engines engines for in the past. Um, and, and continue to do so, and that one actually came to us. To say second hand, we've, we've just sold it, but it's, it's, a, it's a nice, based on a small engine. So even though it is nine inches to the foot, typically nine inches to the foot on on some of the big traction engines would be quite a, a large engine in its own right. But being based on the tractor, it, it comes out somewhat somewhat smaller, manageable, really nice and manageable. So so I take it that the engines we've looked at before, really they'll go onto a. A small domestic trailer or in the back of a van yeah um, a van after a car but when you get into guys like this and you are talking a bit more weighty and probably yeah. decent sized trailer what's that going to weigh and a half? that uh, 2.6 that one yeah so you, you well i know about weight yeah you you're, you're well into um you're well into sort of the, the high end of that the sort of half half size weighting really mm. the road the, the road low come at half size road 2.6 for the an 800 yeah. kilo trailer you're there. So you're just being on the three and a half you're, trailer you're, yeah. so still uh within the normal uh road it's, fund license the road yeah. license yeah. not in heavy goods so that's right still a, you, you can still do this domestically without bringing in loaders and that's it and that's all it. The, the complex stuff that's it that's i mean that's part of the appeal of that 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 size yeah. that's why it was it was done really um that, that's 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 where they were going with that is to make an engine which is probably about it's it's it's, it's about as big as you can be without as you say going over that threshold and going a little bit more heavy duty it might be quite nice if we have a look at the uh, some of the work goes on here because i'm sure that people that um are interested in engines would be quite like to see what goes on on the, on the foot plate or up on within the motion so yeah, it might be good to have a look because i think what what people um, that perhaps aren't so au fait with the steam world, they don't realise that actually everything that's that's been made in an engine of this size is identical, as you've mentioned earlier, to the full-size engine. So all of the disciplines that you see here are actually just being replicated from the full-size. Certainly, certainly. You know, as, as much work goes into any miniature traction engine in terms of the actual parts needed, the machine work the, and the expertise in many cases, obviously, um, as, as what would, as what it would take to, to build a, a full size counterpart. Um, you know, it's still the same parts, it's still the same functioning. They are 
truly miniaturizations of a of a larger prototype, um, and, and that's reflected in 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 every every single component. I mean, I have huge respect for the people that build these because. Uh... One of the people that looks after my engine describes me as being dangerous with anything anything more complex than a screwdriver. <laughs> so uh, I'm really very, very respectful and, uh, and admire people that uh, can produce this type of engineering. And whilst this is our, almost archaic engineering and it's, it's from, the, from, from the last century, we're talking at designs that are 80, 100 years old, yeah. really the, the, the work that goes into this is every bit of skilled, isn't it? It is certainly, certainly. You know, we've, we've always said you're looking at, at is, is Victorian engineering, which has been modernised, and it's, it's a testament, really, that actually we've come to a stage where the stuff 100 plus years ago that was produced in the big factories and the big work, work, workshops around the country, around the world, even, um, are now actually we're in a position where the model engineer can produce those in, in, in a garden shed, in a spare room, in some of the smaller cases, in some of the larger cases, obviously the home workshop. Um, and, and you know we, some of what we see is fantastic. You know, it's a credit to the to the miniature model engineering. Um, no, absolutely, and that, and I think this this is a you know a perfect a perfect illustration of what can be achieved mm. in today's world. Yeah. Uh, paying homage to yesterday's machinery. Yes. Really good. Certainly. Thank you. Well, Matt, I, I'm, I'm sorry, we've gone off piste a bit here, but if it's got four wheels and it burns petrol, I've just got to have a look. And I, I've always loved Morgans because they are, you know, really the, um, the last British manufactured sports car of this ilk that there is. So, obviously, as it's part of your heritage here, I just had to come and have a look. And they're in all... Well, they're fantastic machines. All shapes and sizes. Yeah. yeah. But I don't want to stray too much into there because no. actually behind me is... Is a Stanley steam car. So, what a, what a cracking looking. What is it? A ten horse or a twenty? This is actually it's a little bit different. It's a, it's a thirty horse. A thirty horse. Wow. It's a thirty horse uh, replica. Believe it or not. All right. Um, so a few years old. Um, built by a, a relatively local company. Probably a few of our the viewers might might be familiar with. Um, very well known in the in the steam car steam car community. And so this is an example of something they um, they produced in recent years as a, as a, as a say, a replica, but isn't it fantastically done? Oh, beautifully done, done. It's yeah, gorgeous. It, you know, it, it's, um, say, 30 horse, um, 30 horsepower in a, in a, in a, in a lightweight, lightweight body. So actually you've got a car there, which probably in, in, in many ways probably compete with even, even modern traffic, um, you know, based on something I would, I would, I would guess sort of the early part, you know, 19, 1910, that sort of era, that sort of generation. Uh, so when, when it comes to um, regulations, how does a, how does a replica or, or, or a reproduction, uh, how, how does it fare within, within regulations being on the road? Does it, does it follow the, the original vehicle or does it have to comply with modern regs? Um, this one, I'm, I'm, I'm not certain, but the, the, obviously with, with miniature, mm. miniature steam, that, that, I mean, lots, uh, there's lots of engines on the road, obviously. Mm. You've seen lots of miniature, miniature traction engines on the road. Um, there are a few guides online. It's very much a case of, of following the, the DVLA protocol mm. and processes, but it's, it always seems to be successful. Um, you know, they, they, they do go on the road, they are treated as steam vehicles, um, which obviously... Gives them gives them certain benefits over over you know lack of, you don't have to pay pay your your, your road tax etc. Um, mm. Obviously, border testing and, and insurance is is an, is an important part of you know in, of mm. probably the, the, the mainstay of, of, of keeping an engine safe and, and, mm. and legal on the road. Um, but in terms, I mean, obviously, you'll see a, a range in number of plates ranging from obviously Q plates, age related mm. plates, and, and that's purely the person who basically goes through that process and gets it registered at the DVLA. I think it, I think it, it, it tends to vary what the outcome is there, but it's um, it always seems possible, and lots of people enjoy. So a big part of it is is the road runs, is the enjoyment on on on, on the highway and, and, and getting yeah. out and about. You know. Okay. Well, what a well, what a splendid looking vehicle. It's absolutely lovely. 
Great to see. But I think, I think we ought to wander back to more steam, otherwise I'm going to be, I'm going to be <laughs> accused of going off piste yeah. far too far. Yeah. But thank you for that. That's really interesting. No trouble. No, no. We've done the small stuff. Yes. And all, and, and, and all the models, but now we're still alongside a Marshall. I mean, what beautiful engines these are. They're so well built. Marshalls have got a great name. And um, this is your engine, is it? This is the, the family engine. Right. Yes, yeah, this, this is our family family engine. I, I mentioned, I think earlier I mentioned that, that when the company started, Dad, Dad owned a, a four-inch mm. road locomotive. Things have changed <laughs> uh, while the, as the business has developed over the last 15 years or so. We've been doing steam, 2007, I think it started. So, um, and, and actually, a few years ago, we were fortunate enough to be in a position to, to acquire a, a, a full-size traction engine of our own. Um, a long, long-term dream for for dad, uh, Sean, and um, obviously the dream for, for for me as well as, as well, I'm a little bit younger at that point, but enjoying it now as well. And, and I love them in, the, in, in, in this condition, this oily rag, they seem to have a, they ooze character. That's it. Just lovely, these big old marshals are beautiful. Oh, aren't they? Caught our eye. <laughs> caught yeah, our absolutely, eye yeah. Is, um, so this is a, a, a seven, is it? Se seven nominal horsepower, yeah. single cylinder, two speed, um, of 1925. Um, okay, so, so quite quite late. Getting quite late, yeah. Yeah, quite late as they go. Um, fantastic history behind it, which is really what drew us to yeah. it. It was it was originally commissioned by Marshalls themselves uh, for the Royal Show in Chester, 1925. They they built it as a, as a show engine, um, and it was supposed to go to the show for a couple shows for a couple of years, be the engine on the stand that they basically sell orders off the mm. back of. Um, they took it to their first show, and, and, and the family, the Colson family, approached them on this on this plaque here. Mm. The Colson family approached them um, and expressed an interest. That they wanted this engine. They didn't want any other engine. They wanted this specific engine. Um, I understand there was a bit of a wait between Marshall finishing their their run of shows and, and Colson actually taking delivery, uh, and they were a thrashing thrashing contractors up in the north of the country. Um, they worked the engine fairly hard I think for, for, the, for the first part of its life and, and, and owned it right through to the early 50s um, it then I, I, it's a little bit hazy around that time I gather it, it ended up it was never derelict it was always it was always in use it, it did end up in, in a scrapyard I gather as a workhorse pulling pulling, pulling other, other other materials around um, and, and later was 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 acquired by the, the, the Selby family um, near Doncaster. The Selby family looked after the engine wonderfully through its life and, and actually we, we bought it off the Selby family in 2017. Um, so what, what a time they had with it. Um, they, they used it for a huge amount of time. They, they initially bought it to actually work it commercially. Um, <laughs> later it became more of a, a, a preservation um, obviously as, as steam sort of saw the end of its days certainly by the point they even even by the point they bought it it was, it was, it was coming towards its end but they, they, uh, it, it underwent a um, relatively minor restoration I think in, in the 80s 70s 80s that sort of era which is actually when this, this paint was, was applied um, it did have a, a firebox and a few other bits and pieces at that point and, and t today we, we were well the day we saw it we were met with a with a wonderful wonderful looking engine in, 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 in great order which we have say we've enjoyed um, for the last few years. Yeah, very much so and I suppose it's really quite poignant that um, we're having this chat not very many days after the Trust held its annual general meeting and uh, it, it's, it's concerning where coal's going to be coming from yes. and whether it will continue to be mined so from that point of view um, I, I can't see that there won't be steam on the road in the future and the Trust is absolutely committed to ensuring that does continue. Yeah. But we are going to have to accept as a movement that we're not um, an exception when it comes to, to uh, regulations and the environmental bill has just, been, has just uh, received Royal Assent. Uh, we were lucky enough to have Lord Faulkner of, of uh, Worcester who talked to us about his time yeah. Uh, in the House of Lords and what was going on. But he, he also um, signalled that we have to be um, ready and we, we need to embrace the future. Mm. And I suspect that one of the big tasks that we have ahead is to 
help and support as the National Traction Engine Trust, those companies and innovators that are finding solutions to the post-coal era. Yes. So we've got to do everything we can as a movement. And I'm sorry if I'm on my orange box, but <laughs> I've just got the opportunities I'm going to use it. Yeah, sure, um, sure. You know, I, I would just say to, to everybody that's, that's listening and watching and, and hearing us talk today is that, that you can play your part in, in the journey of keeping steam on the road. And we need your support. We, we, we love your, um, your help to convince the regulatory authorities that, that we are okay to be on the road. And if you'd like to help in that, drop onto the ntep.co.uk website, find membership and have a look through because we're, we're a friendly bunch of people. And if you like steam, then come and join us because we don't all bite and we'd love to have you with us. So that's the end of my sales pitch. But I just think it's a beautiful engine. I mean, I've got a barrel, as you know, and, and I think there's something majestic about these big guys. And you put them into context like this. There goes the, the compressor. <laughs> you put them into a situation like this and you've got just something that's absolutely, it's just stunning, stunning. Thank you very much for showing me. Right, so we've come outside, Matt. Just uh, I couldn't couldn't not come and have a look at the at the ransom because my first engine was a was a ransom. And this is a this is a big old chap, isn't it? It's got to be a seven, isn't it? That's it. Seven seven nominal horsepower. So I was just I was just starting to look up the uh, the information this morning. It only came to us uh, yesterday um, for sale. It's actually going on the market later. Um, I was just looking up the details earlier. I think it weighs in the region of 13 and a half tons. So, so quite a, I, I, did, I did notice it, having been more familiar with, with obviously driving the Marshall on the road, mm. even this engine pulling it off the lorry yesterday, I did, a, I did take note of the width of the back wheels and the, and the, height, of the height of the machine. It's, it's quite something. Yeah, well, Ransoms were, were, were very prolific makers and, 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 st and still known today. Mm. But cracking engine, and, and, and we were talking earlier, but I think it's the only the only manufacturer or, or producer of engines that actually use blue as a lining yes, colour. Yes, that's it. Take it's it's really strange, isn't it? Because yeah. you don't actually expect to see blue on an engine. It's just, you see almost every other colour. That's right. But I know our, our old engine, which is now owned by Lester Solomon in Cornwall, yeah. Sister Wendy, had that blue line. And it, that's it. And it's very unusual to see. It takes some getting used to, but actually it's, it's you know, it's, 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 it's nice to see. It's, it's, and it's nice to see it following what it would have been originally. You know, that, very much that's so. It's important, I think. It's easy to sort of gloss over some of those those earlier earlier quirks and differences between mm. the makers, but, but actually it's important to hold on to that. Yeah, they're not the most um, <clears throat> beautifully designed engine, but they're incredibly, incredibly robust and fit for purpose. Everything on there is really well built, lovely, isn't it? Lovely agricultural machines, yeah. aren't they? There, but but right? I, I see just behind there, there's a Ransom's portable. Yes. Which is, again, they were, they were very well known for that, weren't they? So That's right. We ought to go and have a look at that. Have a look, yeah. So what's this, a little five horse, is it, or something? Not done the research on it yet, actually. Is it? Yeah, a little um, something like that. Fine. Something like yeah. that. It's about that sort of size. Nice, manageable, nice, manageable little portable single cylinder, um, right on the edge of being a, a completed restoration. I mean, we've, we've, I know we've mentioned a little bit today. We being involved with sort of steam sales, etc. Obviously, you can't always limit yourself to the the perfect engines. Sometimes it's necessary to advertise things, which. And a big part of the hobby is, of course, the maintenance, the workshop jobs, and sometimes mm. it's necessary to advertise things which aren't quite there or need uh, X doing to them. Mm. And this is one of those examples. It's an engine which has gone through the majority of its restoration. I think it's, it's just coming together now. And um, hopefully someone will have a, a lot of fun with that. I think that will... And, of course, if, you, if, you're, if you're just coming into full-size engine mm. and the budget's a little bit squeaked, yes. then these are more affordable, aren't they? they when are. compared with... Yes. with full-size road going oh, engines certainly certainly and and they're, they're really quite they're, they're nice to see you don't see loads of them mm. at the shows necessarily do you but you, you know they're, they're nice things to see they um and an important part possibly of even the early, earlier history again actually you know well very much so places, you know. very much so because uh, these guys were were being used before we had you know self-propelled steam weren't they yeah. so yeah. another part of um of british history that's uh, it's being preserved by the steam movement that's right Thanks, right. Well, Matt, I've had a really nice time. It's really great. Thank you oh, very great. much indeed for, for sharing what Barrybrook does and, and your day job, a bit different to mine. 
playing with fish, but um, <laughs> this is, uh, it's, it's been really great to smell steam again for a bit. I've forgotten, I haven't smelt it for a while, and it's just lovely to get that, that, that taste. And this Marshall, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's giving me a, a wisp. But yeah, Berrybrook, what a, what a great business. And uh, I wish you well. And, I, and I, I, just, I think probably my message to, to, the, to the people that are listening to, to me today is if you, if you want to get involved with steam, then maybe, you know, grab into a, into a miniature to start with. Have a bit of an understanding. It's not quite so bulky, and it's, you know, to jump into a, to, to hiring loaders and moving is, 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 is quite a chunk. Yeah, it's, it's quite a thing to bite off. So yeah. go and find uh, somebody that sells miniatures, maybe, you know, yourselves down here, or there are lots of other companies up and down the country that do it. Yes. And, and I think that they'll find that, that we're actually quite an approachable bunch of people, aren't I'd we? I'd like to think so. Yeah. I'd like to think so, yeah. Bad. But <laughs> yeah. thanks very much indeed, and I really appreciate the coffee. It's been quite cold. It's been a pleasure. But yeah, thank yeah. you very nice much. Nice to show you around. Cheers.